the other thing about that is, yeah, I, that's what I enjoyed about this episode is the, you know, just acknowledging that soda is hard. Yeah. So many Poda's people. Easy. We just people, go to a park and sit up. <laughs> but even Poda is hard because I see some of the antennas you guys are setting up. It's like, really? You're going to spend an hour setting that thing up? <laughs> I'm Dennis Mahato, amateur radio call sign AD6DM, and this is the Hamdom Thoughts Podcast. This is a podcast about amateur radio, electronics, software, and tinkering. Today, I get to talk to K5QBF, Shane. Shane is an active amateur radio operator who is the man behind the channel This Side of the Radio on YouTube. He does Parks on the Air, has gear reviews on his channel, and also co-hosts the Ham Radio Clubhouse live streams. Let's find out more. Stay tuned. Hey Shane, nice to have you on the Zoom this morning. How's it going? It's going well. I uh, I almost broke out into my Goonies dance with that uh, intro music. That was fantastic. Thank you, <laughs> Goonies. <laughs> nice. Hey you guys. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? You're out in Texas. Um, I forget the great exactly. wet state of Texas, just outside, of, just north of Dallas. Oh, okay, so it's pretty much the middle of Texas. How's it, how's it going out there? Right now over here, it's about almost 68, I think, degrees. I'm jealous. Nice and uh, nice spring day, almost summer. It's, uh, it's 83 degrees this morning and about 99% humidity with the tropical storm-ish that came out of the Gulf oh, wow. uh, yesterday. So, so it's, a, it's a really wet morning this morning. Okay. <laughs> One of those yeah. days you want to stay in bed. <laughs> yeah. I wish we could have some rain out here. It, there are a few drops of rain fell on Friday. We're recording this on Sunday morning. And we're just like, yes, <laughs> drops of rain. We're, we're in a drought right now. So, you know, we we're, we will take anything we get. But, um, yeah, we 83 and week. rain. That sounds. And I love how in these uh, episodes now, we're, we really are hams because we're talking about the weather. That's like the first thing we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me want to start up a net. Are you ready? You want to be net control today? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Next, let's talk about our ailments. Yeah, I'm going to go to the doctor because uh, no, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> so, Shane, you have a YouTube channel called This Side of the Radio which in my mind is always this side of ham radio. I always mess that up, but this side of the radio. And you also are one of the hosts of the ham radio clubhouse, which is on Tuesday nights with uh, a bunch of others, including uh, like beer snack and smoke, uh, smoke signals, RF and others there. Uh, You also have an emphasis. I noticed on your channel so far on POTA parks on the air, but you do also do some, gear reviews and antenna reviews it looks like on your channel the review stuff is new that's that's something i'm jumping into yeah so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, you know your background what you do what you did if you're retired and uh, what interests you and how you got into ham radio well i'm not retired yet i'll be there soon Uh, i work for southwest airlines and uh, started there about five years ago and uh, before that i was an over-the-road truck driver of all things Wow. And um, <clears throat> in uh, 2006, I got my uh, my technician license, license down in Austin while I was uh, playing with the storm chasers and uh, ended up, you know, doing the normal thing, playing on the repeaters, you know, played with some satellite stuff. Some some friends got me into trying the ISS stuff on field day. And uh, then I went, you know, over the road and that kind of at the time, I didn't I didn't have any aspirations to go do HF or anything like that. So I went over the road, drove for 10 years over the road, and just kind of let uh, ham radio go. 
and then of course the uh, the human malware virus comes around, and uh, so everyone's striving for something to do because you're just tired of sitting at home all day long. Thankfully, my job requires me to be in a big blue room with about a hundred other people where we're mm. uh, monitoring flights and checking on crew and making sure the system's running. Uh, as optimal as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was looking at reaching out for the hobby, I was like, you know, I should probably look at my general. It'd be something to do, something to study, something to, uh, to occupy my time. And I ran across Hammer U crash course. I ran across uh, uh, Hammer U 2.0 or in, in his, uh, uh, the general class that he did. Mm -hmm. And then you can't, you can't run across those guys without running into Mike, hey, MRD, which oh, is yeah. nothing but POTA. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> that's what I want to do, Mike. Uh, I'm in a, yeah. I'm on the third floor of an apartment building. So everyone said, well, you can't do HF in an apartment. I was like, hold my beer. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah. So then I, uh, I saw Mike's videos and, uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to pull this, this POTA thing up, take a look at it. Uh, next thing you know, I see there's three parks within a 20 minute drive here. And I was like, let's go do it. That was when I first was able to experience a S zero noise floor. Oh wow! And if any anyone anyone who lives in a city understands my pain, yeah, there's noise everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the first time I went out and I set this antenna up and I turned the radio on, I didn't hear anything. And I'm like, okay, is the radio broken? Yeah, that's Game's first up, thought, right? Set right. <laughs> I was like, did I break? Is the coax uh -oh. sorted? What's going on? <laughs> Check the SWR. It's got a perfect match. I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? Because this is my first time on HF. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, didn't, there's, I didn't have any Elmers here because, of course, you know, everything shut down. And that was that's another thing I'll get into shortly is, the, uh, is how my Elmering moved over to virtual. But I'm sitting out there in this park, and I throw my call sign out, and immediately 30 people come back to me. And I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. I'm oh, like, wow. Ah, ah, <laughs> first time pile I, up. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. So I'm just pounding away at the keyboard. I was like, I hope I don't sound like an idiot. I hope I don't sound like an idiot. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then I look at this at, at the, you know, I'm giving these five, nine signals all, you know, cause they're so loud mm -hmm. and I look over at my meter and they're like, they're like a, a three or a two, uh -huh. but they, because it's so quiet out there, they, they're just booming in. Oh, wow. So I was hooked <laughs> from that point on. I've been hooked. Uh, I hunt photo wow. from the house when I can, but Man, I love going out in the parks. I like being out where no one's around. Most people leave me alone. I guess I think I, they, they think I'm crazy because I have all this stuff set up. You know, and I've had a few people stop by like, hey, what are you doing? I say, hey, it's Tam Radio and it's Parks on the Air. It's the greatest thing ever. Wow. That's awesome. I have yet to experience a, uh, a POTA pileup. Uh, I always talk about doing a Parks on the Air, and I really have no excuse because I have identified state parks that are you know, less than an hour away. And I have several ham friends in the general area who are always saying, come on, let's go, let's, let's do one. And they're lifting the restrictions and everything. And yet still I have not taken the time to go out and do one. So that's another first that's coming up in 2021 for me. Nice. You should, even if you can't, you know, I, I encourage anybody that's listening to this, even if you don't have a Poda park that you can go to, go out to a local park. Set your equipment up, practice doing that. And you'll be surprised when you get out away from, you know, try to find a park that's kind of on the outside of town. When you get away from all that noise and, and you're hunting parks, people that you'll be surprised at how many, how many signals you can actually hear and, and can hear you just because you're not being squashed by all that, uh, the Metro noise, I like to call it. Yeah. So you talk quite a bit about parks in the air and you sound really fired up about it. Uh, what love it. <laughs> are there any other activities that you like to do most in ham radio? You know, I, I'm so new. So I, I got my general in October and I'm still learning all this stuff. Uh, I've, I jumped on parks on the air. Um, I've wanted to try a JSA call. I love FT8. FT8 is really easy to do from my house because mm -hmm. it's weak signal. So I don't necessarily, the, the noise doesn't really make it. Of course, I'm sure I miss some things, but I've, I've gotten FT8 contacts all the way to South Africa from Texas. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, um, <laughs> HF, as they say, HF is my bang. I really like it. I, 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 I push myself to go to get that DX, to get out there and just to, 
to say, okay, what do I need to do to make my signal stronger? I'm going to work with 50. When I go portable, at 50 watts. Mm -hmm. I don't, the, I don't run a hundred Watts portable 50 Watts. Cause if I, you know, QRP guys, I love them to death. You guys are awesome. But I get, so I get frustrated mm -hmm. if someone yeah. can't hear me. So I'm like, come on, turn up the power. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think it's Mike, uh, K at MRD who, who maxes out at 90 Watts. I, mm -hmm. It's like his own mental limit that he sets. He just doesn't want to do the max power for some reason. And we're like, why 90 man? And, He's just like, well, that's that's what I do. I do 90 watts on my radios. So, yeah, 50 watts. I I know that my radio right now is set to around 40 or 45, depending on the band. So mm -hmm. I, I try to make it work without maxing out my system. So yeah. I get that. I want to be as, as efficient as possible. And the when I found the, the wire antennas, I, that, that was the biggest thing. Uh, when I was getting into to ham radio was, okay, what kind of antenna do I want? And everyone says, oh, get the, get the, get a loading coil, get this, you can get all the bands. And I was like, I'm just starting out. I want to learn. I don't have a bench where I can build something, but uh, I do have, you know, I can take these, these wire antennas, which my, my absolute favorite right now is the infant half wave. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I call myself as I'm an infant half wave geek. <laughs> but uh love the infant half wave i just got um on my my uh channel you'll see a short where my uh my pack 10 mini came in yeah thanks to mike i've been trying to get that thing for six months oh wow and, uh, every time every time george gets them they are gone just like yeah. that i lucked out so, i got one really pretty easily now that i think about it but this was like maybe four months ago or so I just went I on there. Mike. I was like, okay, everyone talks about Pac-10. Let me go check it out. And he happened to have them on in stock, and I got one of those nice. in-fed half waves. It was right around the time I was thinking about a best antenna for 705, right? The, yeah. Having it resonant. So, yeah, really cool antenna. I have yet to, uh, again, deploy it in a remote setting and, and actually make contacts with it, but it's 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 really easy to work with. I'm with you there. Mine's still sitting in the uh, box. I did a review of the uh, the MFJ antenna that I normally use, which is the 1984 MP. It's a a 40 through 10 that I take portable, and I uh, did a review on that one, which comes out Tuesday before the uh, Hammer Deal Clubhouse show. And um, but I can't wait to take the Pack 10 Mini out. Yeah, because if Mike can get Alaska on a Pack 10 Mini, Shane can get Alaska on a Pack 10 Mini. Yeah, so it's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah let's talk about that what's your what is your home shack like slash studio well it's my <laughs> it's it's my dining room table is what it is oh really um no so yeah so i don't have a i don't have a specific place it's a one bedroom apartment so i don't have a specific place to put a, a radio up so everything stays in two apache 3800 hard cases and then when i want to take them out and play radio um the radio is in one and then the the antenna and everything else is on is in the other box and since i'm on the third floor i'm on the on the perimeter of the apartments so i throw my infant half wave off the balcony on the of the third floor oh, okay. and then i have a i have a couple of uh, bungee straps to keep it nice and tight and uh, it sets up at a nice 40 degree sloper coming off the balcony and um south america easy south america um the way the direction or the way that the apartment sets, um, the New England states, I can get California and Arizona sometimes, but I'm always banging into New York. Mm -hmm. um, I, I haven't gotten DX from from the uh, from the house yet. That's the that's the well, I say DX. I've, I've gotten South America, but I haven't gotten um, Europe. Mm -hmm. And that's my next challenge. I can get uh, I think it's uh, Japan on the gray line. So that's another challenge is trying to get to a Japanese. Yeah, I've, I've been looking at my past DX contacts. I, I can get Australia and in like Japan in the evenings and uh, most of the country up to Alaska and, you know, down to Florida. But Europe always evades me and I'm over here in California. So uh, I looked at it on a globe and it really is that northeast direction that seems to be the weak spot in my in my uh, signal throw so trying to figure that out try to try to get more toward the pole and mm -hmm. up so that i can 
potentially reach. I mean, I've hit Sweden and France and and things like that, but the that, those would be rare, and I'd be like, oh yes, you know. There was one time I did a a CW. I think it was Scott N zero O I. He he pops on our Slack channel and says, hey Dennis, try Sweden right now. They they sound pretty good. I'm like, I never get Europe, but I'll give it a try. And so he's got this pile up running, and I I'm one up, and I'm trying. And then I, I think I hear my call back. So I was like, <laughs> like well, hey, Scott, I think I got it. I gave him a five, seven, nine, but I, I think I got it. I don't know. Next thing I know, I get a I get a QSL on him. I was like, oh, my gosh, he, he got me on. Um, I always say Lord of the Rings, but uh, Log of the World. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it seems like uh, it's so hard to get that thing set up you it is lord of the rings it's like we're yeah. all going to mordor <laughs> to try to set up our log books <laughs> i couldn't believe it <laughs> yeah that was and so i was like wow I, I didn't i wasn't sure that i got him but i think I, I thought i did and he confirmed so that was awesome but yeah europe that's, europe is a hard one for me in california that's my next uh challenge for myself is to learn uh learn, learn code and uh, do some cw stuff um we had a uh, T.O. was doing a stream the other night where everyone was um, trying to reach each other. Like a, he, he set up on a frequency and just everyone that was watching the live stream was trying to contact him or contact each other. <laughs> everyone, of course, was stepping on each other. But he had um, FL Digi up mm. and uh, I had my rig set up. And I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know CW, but I can at least in, in a 7300, it has a keyer built in. So I typed in my call sign and hit the hit the transmit button and yeah. it shows up on his screen. I was like, man, I could play radio tonight if I knew CW. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so also let's talk about your, your portable shack. What, what is that like? What, what do you, my, my, you've talked about it briefly, my, my, but what's your, what's the rig that you bring portable? Yeah. Yeah. My home shack is my portable shack. So, oh, the so it's all one in the same out of the field. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, everything's one in the same. I love that. Uh, everyone thinks I'm crazy for taking the 7300 out in the field, but no, um, no. I have a... Uh, it's a good uh, field radio. A lithium iron. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a lithium iron phosphate battery that uh, I plug into it, a 16 amp hour. And I've there's a video on my, on my channel where I did three activations uh, in a single day. That's the Radar Rhino. And um, that battery when I got home had still plenty had, had a ton of juice in it, even after running there's, if you want to hear a pile up um, that video about halfway through there is uh, I, I activate a park that's never been activated before. And as soon as you throw out a new park, everyone comes to join the party. And I wow. got, uh, I got a, um, a maritime mobile on that one, but I just, I get my, I, I throw CQ out maybe three times and then you'll see, I put it across the video. I said, here comes the pile up. And it's just like, bang, 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 bang. I was like, I can't, it went on for 40 minutes. Wow. Just contact after oh, contact for 40 great. minutes. I was, I was logging people as fast as possible. <laughs> it's like, I apologize guys. I'm going as fast as I can. Yeah. Let's let me actually play one of your videos. And I, I have one queued up here. I wanted to, I wanted people to hear uh, just the first part of one of your videos and hopefully they'll go to your channel, check it out. But uh, let's give that a listen right now. Today on this side of the radio, we're gonna go through my portable HF radio gear that I use when out doing parks on the air. I hope that's something that you like. If it is, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video. And also stick around to the end and I'm gonna show you how to set this mast up in no time flat. All right, guys, welcome there. back. Uh, well, here it is. K5 this QBF, is, uh, this side of ham radio. Yeah. You start talking, you have your gear all laid out in front of you. Pretty cool intro for getting out there and portable, which is what everyone I've noticed is is really preaching. They're saying, get out there, just do it. Just get just out there with it. your gear so and try fun. it out. You think about KM4 ACK, K8 MRD, and so many others, K6 ARK, they're, they're just like, just get out there and test your gear. Give it a try. And uh, that Smoke seems to be what you're doing. RF. Oh, yeah. 
smoke cigars Don, as well. whiskey, whiskey one, Fox Trot, Yankee Golf. He's always doing Poda. We call him the uh, Poda OG or the Godfather of Poda. <laughs> Godfather of Poda. <laughs> so tell us about your channel. How did you get into YouTubing or why did you get into YouTubing? I don't know. Thought I'm crazy. <laughs> no. So this is an interesting story. So I was out. Um, I just got in my radio. I had it for maybe two or three days. Got the antenna up and I'm just tooling around and I hear someone calling CQ. And uh, I was like, oh, I'll answer him back. And uh, his name's Vince. And he's going to shoot me for not uh, uh, knowing his call sign. But uh, it evades me at the moment. But he um, he was recording he was doing a live stream like Joe does. And um, so we, and I was, he's over in um, Tennessee, I think. And we had this great signal between the two of us. So he's like, Hey, do you mind if we try some QRP stuff? So we ended up doing a video or I was doing a video with him and didn't even know it. And he's like, Hey, let's do go down to one watt or go down to, you know, two Watts or whatever. Let's see what, see what, so we did that. He's got a video on his channel. Um, of that conversation. And he's like, Hey, you should come join me over in the discord and meet some of the guys that are doing these um, ham radio stuff on, on YouTube. And I was like, okay, cool. Never heard of discord before, but okay. (laughs) So I I, I downloaded discord, went in and got found the link. He said, you invited me to the, to their channel. And I was like, Holy cow. There's all these people that are doing ham radio stuff on YouTube. You know, mm-hmm. and everyone, some of my close friends are like, you know, ham radio, it's all a bunch of, you know, older guys. And then, you know, they go mm-hmm. to the coffee shop and that's like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. You need to go to this YouTube channel and check this out. So uh, I met um, K5YVY, Bro Jet. <laughs> Bro Jet or <laughs> and, uh, Joe Brett. Yeah, Joe Brett. Other known. <laughs> T.O. calls him. Yeah, T.O. calls him Bro Jet. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he was like, he goes, you know what? You should start a YouTube channel. And I was like, why would I start a YouTube channel? He's like, because it's so much fun. You can live stream, you can, you know, and I was like, and the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? Maybe I could share something as a new ham to someone else who's a new ham Mm -hmm. and be relatable. And I call it dumbing it down Texas style. Don't want to offend any Texans (laughs) out there, but we are, I'm a simple guy. I I don't, I'm no flair, nothing like that. But if I can explain something, maybe someone's not understanding, but the way I understand and the way that I convey that, that they can understand a topic and that helps them, then that, okay, that's giving back to the community. So it's kind of out of, out of necessity, really, because I couldn't go out and play radio with my friends at the time because, you know, everything that's going on in, in the world in 2020, which we just want to put some white out on that and say, that eh, didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I, uh, I sat around and I talked to him and I was like, well, I, what, how do you name a channel? How do you, you know, where'd you come up with your stuff? And we threw around some ideas and, um, I said, well, I, I have an idea and I'll bounce it off of, off of you. Let me know what you think. Yeah. Uh, every time you have a QSO with someone and you're out rag to it, you talk about your equipment, you talk about the weather, you talk about hobbies and interests. So the way I pictured it is when I'm having a QSO, I'm trying to find out what's going on on that side of the radio. Mm-hmm. So I was like, wait a minute. Why don't I show what's going on on this side of the radio? Nice. So that's where the, the genesis of the, uh, uh, of the, the YouTube channel came out was this is what's going on on this side of the radio. Now, it's not always going to be ham radio. I, I do have a couple other hobbies. I'm a, I'm a home brewer. Mm-hmm. I'm also a pilot, been a pilot for 20 years. So there's other things that I want to incorporate in there. It's mm-hmm. mostly all going to be ham radio, but I do want to throw in maybe home brewing tips or something like that just to, just to freshen things up a bit. But I've had a blast doing it so far. Yeah. I mean, your videos are really well done. And you seem like an old hat at it. I mean, I've seen your intro that we just played. That one, that's really nicely done. I like, I like that. And yeah, I go through them and it's, uh, there's not a lot there. Not a lot of videos as if you look at the, (laughs) if you look at some of the other YouTubers, I, I had the impression you've been around. Uh, when I first, when I saw your first video and then I went to your main channel and I saw that you only had like half a dozen videos up there, I was like, Oh, this guy is pretty new. And, but they're, they're really well done. They, it seems like you've been doing this for years and just the way that you deliver them and how they're edited. Very well done. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. I had some really good mentors. Um, one of them being temporary offline, ham radio dude, mm-hmm. K5, YVY, all these guys, um, uh, smoke and ape, you know, mm-hmm. each one of these smoke signals are all these guys. Each one of them has a niche or the way that they present. And, it, and I picked up on things from each one of those to create my delivery. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and, and it, I appreciate the fact that ever that you think that I've I've been doing this for so much time because I'm I'm so new. I it takes me um well yesterday I edited a video that's coming out Tuesday and it took me four hours to edit a 15 minute video. Four hours. And I have no idea. <laughs> it takes it takes longer to edit a video than it does to film the thing. Yeah. And that's something that I've been working on with TO. He's like, well, if you film it the way you're gonna edit it, you won't have that problem. And I was like, but I my brain doesn't work that way. Mm. My brain's like just film it this way and then we'll figure it out when we get in the editing window. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's also something that I want to encourage the listeners about is that there, there is that big resistance that you get because you're like, ah, oh, I recorded this great trip that I took with my radio, but now I got to edit this thing. And I mean, it's the same for anything that you're producing, even this podcast. It's like, I'll have great conversations with people but they are really long and I have to go through the whole thing and edit it, <laughs> make sure that, you know, it flows pretty well. Uh, don't let that stop you because there are people who want to hear or see what you've created and what you're going through on your side of the radio. Right. So it's absolutely, it's really worth That's- the effort, I think. And I, I really hope that, uh, that this side of the radio channel gets a lot more videos and a lot more subscribers there. I appreciate each and every person that's that's hit that subscribe button. That's it, it's interesting because the everyone wants value from what they produce. Well, value for me is not necessarily monetarily or anything like that. To me, the value is someone hitting a like button, or even if they hit a dislike button because yeah. you watched it. You maybe there was something about it that, that you didn't like. And I encourage everyone if there's something on any channel that either you didn't like or just just tell that content creator in a nice way, if you can yeah. but tell that content creator what you didn't like, because we learn as we create these videos, as you create this podcast, we learn together. We learn what people like and how we can, how we, how we can make our shows better, make our content better so that it, that everyone can enjoy it. Yeah. You're not going to please everyone. Of course. Yeah. But, yeah. But I, I, I encourage feedback from everybody and I've gotten negative feedback and I've changed things based off that negative feedback that's gotten more subscribers and more likes. So mm-hmm. it, you, you just learn from, learn from your mistakes as they say. Yeah. Well, you guys took it a step further and went on to form a group live stream called the ham radio clubhouse. And so I wanted to ask you about that. How did you get involved with live streaming with this rowdy bunch that you've connected yourself to? Uh, <laughs> you guys have a lot of fun. In fact, the last <clears throat> stream, well, maybe it's, it's already two streams ago. I, don't, I can't keep track of how many times you are going on, but uh, it, was, it was hilarious. And it was supposed to be, uh, I, I, actually, I even forget the topic, but... All, it was a uh, ham. It was hamming it forward. Oh yes, hamming it forward, and yeah. But it just went off the rails. I mean, it was still on track with talking about the generosity of a lot of hams, and each of one of you talked about how someone has helped you or the opportunities you've been given at times, and then it just it just goes crazy. And I know you've talked about this before in your previous clubhouse meetups. Why the clubhouse exists? It. it is basically because of Discord to some extent, right? It is. So we used to do in in um, K five YVY's Discord channel. So we used to do a random meetup. We would post in the main group, "Hey, everyone, come to the video side, and let's just sit around and have a meeting." So we uh, everyone would get in there, and <laughs> I told him, I said that content. It can't go out on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> and I, well, I'm, I'm as guilty as any because I'll, I'll have one too many scotches or something like that. And, you know, <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, I need to go to bed now. Yeah. Um, but so, so Don, um, I wish he won Fox right Yankee golf Izzo, as everyone calls him. Don said, you know what? We need to make a YouTube channel of this. 
And I told Don, I said, that would be the biggest train wreck ever. <laughs> but people like, but people can't not watch a train wreck. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's a very, so, um, uh, uh, very subdued and, and controlled rain, train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> and that the that one that uh, that you were talking about uh that's the we try to keep it at an hour but we've gotten we've gotten so many people that that jump into the chat and that are that are we interact with people in the chat all the time that that particular went two hours and at the two yeah. hour mark we're like hey guys i gotta go to bed <laughs> i gotta be up at four o'clock mm-hmm. in the morning to go to work but um it was so much fun so we got together and we said hey let's do a youtube channel and we're going to call it the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's what it is. We uh, Sometimes we have a topic. Sometimes we don't. I think uh, Friday, uh, Kyle's channel, he was having some technical difficulties. So uh, I was at work. I couldn't participate. I was bummed about that. But um, so the, they said, hey, come to the clubhouse. We'll just fire up the clubhouse channel and, and we'll all sit around and hang out. So mm-hmm. everyone that was that was you know there for Kyle's show that was wanting you know ham radio content on that Friday night said, we sent, everybody came over to the clubhouse and they did a, I think hour and 45 minute show. They're mm-hmm. just sitting around. I remember that one too. You were, uh, you did pop on and you were kind of just walking yeah, right around with end. your phone <laughs> and everyone <laughs> was, had I'd uh, just gotten home from work. <laughs> everyone had commentary on what you were doing. Cause you were just kind of walking around and there was, was no audio initially, <laughs> but we just see all these backgrounds passing by and I forget the commentary, but they were, they were just elbowing you and jeering you the whole time until you finally started talking. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's an episode of the uh, clubhouse where <laughs> and I'm going to I'm probably going to shoot myself in the foot here, but there was a an episode of the clubhouse where I was on vacation in Mexico and I told the guys, I'm hey, I'm not going to be there for that show. And uh so uh we were all out by the pool. <laughs> We had had way too much tequila. And uh, mm. so <laughs> I see then I get the note. I'm on the Wi-Fi, of course. I get the notification. Oh, the Hamburger New Clubhouse is going live. I was like, oh, I'll step in the chat and say hi to everybody. So I was in the chat and they're like, you know, hey, what's going on? Enjoy Mexico, whatever. And then I get this message from, from Joe, Joe K5YVY. Uh, Joe likes to set me up all the time. He <laughs> likes to uh, take screenshots of my antics. So he said, hey, you should come into the channel. And then hang out with us. And I was like, well, I don't think I'm going to have good enough internet. I hit the button, forgot I was at the pool, no shirt on, hanging out. Nice. <laughs> and then there's this, this what's the equivalent of a, a raccoon in uh, Mexico? I forget what the name of it is, but it ran by the pool. And of course, me and my tequila state take off running after this critter with, the, with my phone, forgetting <laughs> that I'm live on YouTube right now, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> chasing this thing across. The, so, yeah. Sometimes YouTube Live is a good thing. Most most of the time, it's a good thing. <laughs> Those are the sometimes best moments. Though. There needs to be a there needs to be a, a button where we can turn Shane off. <laughs> oh, those are the best, <laughs> especially with uh, tequilas or scotches. A lot of great content was had because of that. <laughs> At, uh, to someone's um, detriment, I'm sure. What are your thoughts about that? This all started in Discord, and to me, it seems like Discord is shaping up to be the main way that a lot of hams are talking it's uh it's bringing together the ham community what are your thoughts on on discord and its its role in hams nowadays i love it i discord is awesome um i i I used to be on facebook and i'm on twitter now i like twitter with to to promote the the shows and stuff and and to to comment to my friends but it all discord allows you to find an uh, to find an avenue of a hobby. I have an, I have my own discord channel for home brewing. So it's interesting because I can, I have like four or five channels on, on my side, on my side of my screen. And I can just go click through there and talk to my friends that are all doing the same thing that I, I'm doing. And you don't have people going in being yahoos and, and mm-hmm. politics and all that kind of stuff that, that all stays away for the most part. I think uh, <laughs> Joe's in there and hits the mute button if someone decides to go off the rails. But um, for someone who has a discord channel that, is curated um, 2.0. Ham Radio 2.0 has got a great uh, channel. Cra- Ham Radio Crash Course. He he does an after show after his um, his um, YouTube live show. He does an after show in Discord, and it's it's so cool. It's an interesting way to connect. I mean, every channel that I've been on has a there's a video audio section, and if you want to go and hang out with your friends, everyone just go grab your computer, go, hop into the video channel, and you can all just have a a, a Zoom meeting. Mm-hmm. 
It's awesome. Yeah, like, I, I, I think it's great. Get, I love it. I just recently discovered K5YVY's Discord, and I, I hopped in there, and uh, I think it was from one of the live streams. Someone shared the link, and I was like, oh, so this is where the shenanigans happen. <laughs> 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 but there's uh, uh, a I've, yeah. I've noticed ever since well you know ham radio crash course discord is is basically the world of hams there's so many people in there that you just never really know what's going on any given moment there's like i would say easily 50 channels in there oh yeah <laughs> in, Easy. In, in his uh discord then i heard about temporarily offlines discord uh k5 ata steve he has mm-hmm. his and so I was like, what is it about Discord? Now I have JerryNet, you know, a small group, maybe around 20 or there's supposedly like 45 of us in there, but <laughs> there's more 20 like 20 of them are active. Yeah, more like 20 who are actually <laughs> uh, in contact with us. Everyone else kind of dropped off. But Slack is, is, it doesn't have that video aspect, but it is where we chat somewhat in real time, just um, talking about what's whatever's going on during the day or what we're working on or what do you think of this design idea or there's a lot of banter that goes on there and uh, a lot of picking on Mike K at MRD for breaking <laughs> things. Um, but it's, it's a fun place and that's, that's kind of where I'm at is Slack. But then I noticed a lot of discord uh, coming up and it just seems to be catching on with a lot of the different groups now. And there's a lot of overlap too. So the same yeah. people that I find in Joe's discord, I see them also in TOs and, and HRCC and, and Steve's. And it's like, why can't we just uh, join them all together to make a mega discord? <laughs> then that would be a little bit unruly. Eh? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I like I, I like having the diversity in the channels. Um, I'm mostly in, um, in Joe's and TOs. Mm-hmm. But it's like your friends, all your friends go to hang out at one place. You know, we all go to this one arcade for those that are kids, kids from my era that are that went to arcades and hung out we all have our one hang our one arcade but every now and then we like to take our our friends and go to the other arcade and meet with with the other guys that we yeah hang out that's with. that's a good way to put so it. so that's that's the analogy that i like to use is we have we have a couple different arcades that we all go and uh, play ski ball in yeah yeah totally and with the discord the one thing i've noticed though is and this is my one gripe if i want to risk making people mad because they love discord but uh someone will tell me in my slack hey someone's trying to reach you they had a question it's normally about batteries or something like that and so i'll go to that discord and it will say you have 43 mentions and i'm just like trying to find exactly what they're talking about it's very hard to find when someone has mentioned your name or is asking you something specifically by by calling you out and i'm just like clicking through i'm like well where is it? I don't know. Can you just paste what they asked? Because I don't know what I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I'm with you there. Um, Cause I'll get mentioned in several different, different discord channels and trying to figure out which channel I'm in and to make sure that I'm, you know, finding it. I always say, if you've got a question for me, right click on it and hit direct message. Yeah. Just yeah. shoot me a message. Do a message let, directly. It's so much easier for me to get it that way. And I can answer your question so much faster. Yeah. On Slack, it just says there's a section it's called mentions and reactions. And you click on that and you can see if someone is, if, if you see a little notification bubble, then you can go to that and just see what someone had asked you wherever it is. Yeah. And I wish discord would do that. Maybe we need to send feedback to discord and say, Hey guys. Yeah. But I always knew Discord to be like the the gamers Twitch talk, you know. It's like right. it's always been about gaming, which I you know, I, I did my share of gaming in the early two thousands, but it wasn't I was never very that interactive with it. I would just right. play people and that's it. I wouldn't have any what do you call those things? Team speak or whatever the <laughs> The thing is where, where you're having like real time commentary or, while you're killing every, everyone. Every, yeah. When everyone has the headphone and a mic. And yeah. Like, yeah. I never did left, that. Go left, go left. <laughs> never did any of that kind of stuff. I never, I would Leroy join. Jenkins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now there's a reference that I hope people get. <laughs> But, um, I'm not gonna mention, I'm not gonna say what it is, but if those of those of you that know, you know. Yeah. And if you know, you know. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins, I haven't heard that in years. But uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, it's it's really cool, and I'm I'm really pleased to see it that everyone's coming together. That they not only have the usual social media things, which are, you know, they're good. They're they're very helpful in sharing information. But when you want that interaction, uh, a Discord server seems to be like a really great place to have that in real time. I don't consider Slack or Discord or any of the other chat media to be social media necessarily. Yeah. Because I, I, I look at it more as like a, a discussion zone versus, and th- that's, that's splitting hairs because, you know, sure. every Facebook is a discussion zone in a sense. But I yeah. just think that there's there's not so much the focus on likes and approval and being addicted to it when you when you're doing a a conversation right and exactly in a and and i hearken it back to the, the the early days of the internet i used to run an irc server i used to join oh, different irc days. servers and uh, even got it to be popular at the company i was working at at the time back in the early 2000s uh, it was they're like, whoa, IRC is awesome. And I'm like, yeah, it's been around for a long time. <laughs> for a really long time, absolutely. <laughs> and then everyone jumped on Slack. You know, that became the the popular new thing. And now it seems like Discord is is taking that place. But uh, they, they all have their place. And yeah, I'm just glad that people are interacting more and we're getting that real feedback. That's the other thing that I love about the live streams and YouTubing is that it's no longer this content producer and his audience but it's or her audience it's the content producer is just one of the people talking in a large group now and you can interact and talk and ask questions and it's all a lot of cross talk and and learning all together absolutely i love the aspect of of the live chat when we're doing live streams on the clubhouse uh, i i love having that chat window over there uh, sometimes it's flying by and and usually before the show we'll have someone that's designated to, you know that, that does the pop-ups and we'll have someone that's that's solely there to watch the, the chat and make sure we don't miss something that goes by in the chat but uh even joe says the same thing on his uh on his live streams he gets distracted by all the people hanging out in the chat room and forgets that he's supposed to be making cusos on the radio <laughs> you know that's why everyone comes to 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 a stream is to watch him work the radio and do contests and he's yeah. over here chatting with people in the you know in the in the uh, chat window but uh, uh, i also that, you that, mentioned I, joe before you just one real quick plug you mentioned joe uh joe brett or bro jet as bro people jet. know him. uh he just recently launched a merch page and he tweeted about yeah. it, so I'll put that in the show notes as well. But he's got some cool stuff. Uh, I went and got a mug and a sticker from his merch store. Nice. But it's because he has that logo with himself, his like cartooned uh, logo of himself, plus his the avatar from Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that is. And yeah. I was looking for a shirt with that. That's why I didn't get a shirt because I didn't I didn't want just the letters that say K5YBY, you know, amateur radio station. I wanted that face on a shirt. It's on there. It should be up there now. Oh, okay. He's got a shirt with that face on it. Yeah. <laughs> so grumpy. that's the only reason I was going to tell him that I didn't get a shirt also is because I wanted that visage on the shirt so I could go around Costco and sport his face on my shirt. <laughs> I think every, I think everyone that's going to go to Hunt, Huntsville or Huntsville or however you say it, I think everyone needs to have one of those shirts on it so yeah. we can see this grumpy old man walking around. And everyone's going to go, "Who is that? His name's Bro Jet. He's a really cool guy, but man, he's grumpy. Grumpy. <laughs> Where he looks at anyway. That face, like, yeah, he's scoff, he's just scoffing at the camera. So yeah, I just wanted to interject cool that guy. because that just the release last night, and I was really excited to see that he had some stuff up there. And so I'm going to pepper my laptop with a sticker. I'm going to be drinking my coffee with his, uh, his new mug. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's shaming me now because I, I, I made my coffee mug, uh, just to, to see what my, uh, logo would look mm-hmm. like on stuff. And he's like, Hey, you need to create a merch store. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to sell anything. Nobody wants to <laughs> buy that. And uh, so then he's like, well, you need to get stickers. I'm like, oh, it's like challenge coins, you know, challenge right. coins, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like absolutely. everyone wants to have everyone else's as in their collection. So uh, initially, I think my initial, I want to say it was HRCC, 
Like that's when I started like wearing someone else's merch, I would say. And mm -hmm. then now it's like, well, everyone, I'm still waiting for my Kate MRD shirt with the, the smiley, sc the happy skull one with the antennas. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I've got that uh, one. I'm still waiting for the Red Summit RF one. I have uh, nearly everyone else's. And uh, yeah, it, it's just, it's like almost a collector thing now. Now you need a dude, a ham radio dude sticker for your, uh, for your boom. There were your mics at. So you yeah. Put the ham radio dude up there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I do have, I do have stickers now. So uh, every time I, I send out a, a uh, uh, QSL card, I'm going to put one of my stickers in there. So that mm -hmm. I can at least I can at least share my stickers that way, and then on the back of it, I'm gonna write I'll write the YouTube channel. On. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but uh, let me switch gears. What do you wish you could get more into in ham radio? DXing and contesting. Um, mm -hmm. I that's I'm in the process of looking not, not buying a house currently because the market in Texas is crazy and i don't think it's crazy everywhere but that's the idea i want to contest um i tried it a couple times on the um the winter field day mm -hmm. i was chasing there on a technically it's not a contest well it's a contest but and then there was a an ssb contest and i think i racked up like 80 or 90 contacts really quick i was like that's a lot of fun and you know, we had the had the spots going up, and I had the logger going, and to me, the the organized chaos, if you will, mm -hmm. of doing contesting is so much fun. So I want to get more into casual contesting because I'll have a cigar and scotch while I'm trying to contest. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and even your <laughs> photo, really like your your YouTube, I guess, avatar is you, kind of uh, artistically rendered with a cigar in your hand. So it seems like. Uh, that's your that's your jam right there. Exactly. That's on my that that that's funny. That picture was uh, me playing with my iPhone on the patio one day, and I hit the black and white button. I was oh. like, "Man, that makes me look pretty sharp." <laughs> yeah, there we go. Well, it works. <laughs> I'm gonna stick that around. <clears throat> <laughs> Looks like a almost a studio pose. Nice. I would say. <laughs> that was uh, I think that was like the forty or fiftieth time I took that picture. So. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So casual contesting, more DX. Uh, have you thought about like summits on the air or like an actual D expedition to some remote island or something like that? Yeah, D expedition I think would be a lot of fun. Um, if I had a summit closer, I probably would do summits on the air. But Texas, unless you're in the far west side of Texas, we don't have many mountains. I don't. Mm -hmm. There was a video that uh, on April. April, I think it was April Fool's Day that uh, 2.0 put out with him and him and uh, Frank. They walked up to the top of this hill and we're having cigars and doing something on the air because <laughs> that was a Texas summit. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I watch uh, I watch uh, uh, Red Summit RF. I'm jealous. I'm completely jealous because I would oh, love yeah. to go up and go hiking in some of those beautiful places and, and play radio and and uh, Adam K6ARK um, and Radio Runner. You know those guys especially radio runner oh yeah i guess he's i think he's in new zealand he's some of that's just absolutely gorgeous now i'm not a runner don't give me well <laughs> give me see that's wrong. the thing it might that's the thing with me is that they i don't know maybe it's intentional maybe they're just supremely healthy but they don't <laughs> ever show the part where they're getting super winded and having to basically crouch over and almost die after summiting or even on the way up that's me right if i had an honest yes. soda video you would see me hunched over out of breath sweat pouring down like dropping my pack because that damn thing's too heavy you know that kind of stuff right <laughs> i would be so, so you're so you're so you're saying that we need to go do a, a uh, summits on the air video together <laughs> like a real summits on the air this is a, i'll be like this is the truth behind summits on the air and yeah then, and it would just be me Watch struggling me and it's like elevation gain of 100 feet or something and i'd be dying you know <laughs> <laughs> just, oh my god you just gave me the greatest idea for a video ever because <laughs> they do it i'm coming to california like, hey i'm coming guys, to california what's going on and then they're like duty do climbing up this you know four thousand feet elevation gain i'm at you know ten thousand feet going up to thirteen thousand feet and they have no problems at all and 
I'm just like, what do these guys like run marathons every morning just to, you know, wake up? Oh, what's, what's going on with their supreme health here? <laughs> <laughs> it's called they wait until they're not winded anymore. And then they turn the camera on. Yeah. So they've exactly. already died and passed out and recovered. And they're like, oh, well, we're, yeah, on, I, we're on the in my now. <laughs> in my long forgotten YouTube channel. I do have two soda videos on there. And there's no hiding it for me. There's no amount of recovery time that will <laughs> ease the, the appearance. <laughs> you see me, exactly. I am sweaty. I am out of breath and I'm like, we we're up here. <sighs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> just like <laughs> this beautiful sight. See, <laughs> <C-Q. laughs> I got to set up now. <sighs> yeah. It's like, I, I don't understand how, I guess it's just, I haven't done it a lot and mad respect for those guys. Yeah. Especially they can do that. Especially That's awesome. Adam K six air K. Yeah. He, he doesn't even break a sweat and he's at 14,000 feet. It's just, I, <laughs> I don't know how it happens. It's, but yeah, also a uh, ham radio runner. Um, what has he done? Like skiing, I think, or, or something like that. Definitely. Uh, I think I saw one with, just a lot of snow gear, ice axes, that kind of stuff. It's mm-hmm. just insane. I'm like, uh, last thing I'll be thinking about is getting the right shot for a video. If I was in that situation, <laughs> it'd be more absolutely. Like, I mean, more like surviving. The scenery in his the scenery in his videos are amazing, and it, it's it's hilarious. Like I, I'll try to find the uh, the link to the video and send it to you. But there's a video that he has where these there's a pack of mountain goats that are following him as he's doing his thing so i don't know if it's because he was at at at, uh high altitude so long that he kind of got a little crazy but he's having a conversation with the goats as he's coming down (laughs) it's amazing (laughs) so um you say you don't have a really a workbench you mostly operate from your dinner table with a wire thrown over the balcony but uh i'll ask this anyway i mean are, are there things that you're working on like projects or builds or anything like that that you're uh that you're currently getting through not yet i have ordered a solder station because i do want to put together my own infed halfway since Mm -hmm. i'm such an infed halfway nerd Mm -hmm. um i want to build my own infed halfway um i do have on the pack 10 a mini mike has on one of his channel on one of his videos he talks about adding um enough wire to get 40 meters or to get, yeah, to get 40 meters on the pack 10 a mini. So I do that and I'm going to, I may do a, a short or something on, on how to add that link so that you can have 20 or you can have 40 through 10 on the pack 10 a mini. Mm-hmm. But um, other than that, I'm, uh, you know, more getting outside. I, I eventually I want to, I want to do some QRP stuff. So I may get a, a kit or something and build it. I got to learn CW first, but I want, I get a, I get a, a QRP um, CW transmitter and mm-hmm. build it. Yeah. I think that'd be fun. I think once you get a good solder station, it, it kind of is a rabbit hole from there. Probably. So, you'll you'll yeah. figure out all kinds of stuff that you like, Hey, I can build that. I can build that now. <laughs> Let me try that. None, then, of, none of my electronics are safe. <laughs> <laughs> Something I learned from Mike Kate MRD back in, I would say 2018 is, Learn uh, flux. Flux yes. is important. <laughs> yes, it is. Very much so. One of my first uh, I, batteries that I tried to make, uh, I, I did not use any flux. And it was, it was. I thought I damaged the batteries. I was keeping that iron on the thing so long, you know, trying to get it to stick. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a horrendous, I just wrapped it all up in a PVC wrap so you, I could hide all the horrible solder job on it. <laughs> all the other solder, all the other <laughs> horrible solder, solder joint. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's the, my my. As I progress in the hobby, uh, everyone says that you should build an antenna, whether it be a dipole or something. So that's that's kind of what I'm I'm waiting on. I want to build an antenna of some sort, or you know, just to say I created it, and yeah, it works. Yeah. There is <laughs> a like, great the deal of I don't know satisfaction when you have put together something and you use it in the field, and it it works great, yeah. or even if it works kind of great, not so great. You're just like, I made this and like, it works. I made this. It's my antenna. It works yeah. as designed. <laughs> <laughs> Who are your ham radio Elmers or heroes? Well, um, the YouTube guys that I'm, uh, my, the YouTube group 
the discord we had a uh, we have a, an episode of the clubhouse about this um about elmers that are virtual and i think that's kind of where we moved off to or, or the out of necessity of course because we couldn't meet together we couldn't you know we mm-hmm. couldn't go to to an antenna build off or something like that mm-hmm. so we had to uh you know, come up with a different way. And I think these YouTube channels and these discords where we can all talk about it. I've learned so much off of watching um, ham radio and coffee, those guys. Oh Um, yeah. You know, just the, I think these have become a new style of Elmering. You know, even, even uh, ham radio dude, you know, he had a video out where he talks about being Elmered by T.O.'s kids about doing parks on the air. Mm, So I think, I think, I think the Elmering has, of this style has gone to a digital platform. And I think it's great because you can have so many different options or feedback from people who said, I tried this. It didn't work this way. You should try it that way. You know, I, anytime I have a question about something, there's someone I could post that question anywhere and I'm going to get 20 responses and they're all going to say, this is how I did it. This is how I did it. And then I just pick, you know, I'll try it. What is uh, like it would work for me. What is the smoking apes joke? It's like if you ever get lost in a remote place, just ask uh, antenna question. Is it is what he says, and three hams will show up and save you. And three hams <laughs> and, will and show up. Yes. They'll, they'll have an answer, <laughs> and then you'll be saved. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you could, or you could say, uh, "Yes, is better than Icom." Oh no! And they'll come out. Then they'll come out of the trees. <laughs> <laughs> you might get beat up if that's the case, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, that was a quick hour. It was a quick hour. Is there anything else you want to say or plug or, or give advice about before we close here? Uh, I want to say anyone who's thinking about uh, starting a YouTube channel, do it. Mm-hmm. Um, find something that interests you. And I guarantee you that someone out there has the same interest that you do and would love to talk to you about. It. So, YouTube is a great platform. Don't be scared of it. Um, save all your blooper reels because one of these days I'm going to, I'm going to put out a, a blooper video of all the times I've screwed up while I was trying to do something. And mm-hmm. I, I think it's a great, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then for ham radio, uh, if there's something you haven't tried in ham, in ham radio, go do it. Just get out, get out on the air, you know, go out there, try it, experiment with it. If you, if you don't know what something about it, hop in a discord channel, ask somebody, don't be afraid to ask anybody. We're all here to have fun together. Mm-hmm. Um, join our channels, join, join the YouTube channels. Uh, come hang out with us in the clubhouse. Yeah. I want to say that having- too, is that sometimes you want to do something, but you just don't know the first place to go or to start. Like, uh, I've mentioned this a couple of times already in, in past episodes, but I want to get more into how to deal with wood like lumber and make things yeah. woodworking, but not, yeah. you know, I think of woodworking, like, you know, there's this guy with a whittling block and he's like carving out this intricate. No, it's just, I want to make a shelf or, you know, or something like that. Yeah. I don't know the first thing about these things. I don't know what saws are for, or, you know, the different things that you do to, to join two pieces of wood together. And I'm, I'm discovering that. And for me, this is a very good exercise in the beginner's mindset because I'm approaching this and I'm just overwhelmed by all the choices and all the different things. And people are saying a lot of different things about it, but I just, uh, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed. So it's good to be able to go to like a discord and just say, Hey, I want to get started with this, but I I don't know the first thing to do about it. So what, what should I do? And a lot of the time you'll get questions like that in a discord where people are like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to, I want to do DX and, and have a perfectly resonant antenna, but I want to, I don't want to, I want it all to be free. I don't want to spend any money for it. And I don't, you know, and I want it to be super compact. I want, I want my beam to fold up and fit in my backpack or something like that. And yeah, yeah. if you're K6 ARK after, you know, 10, 20 years of research, maybe you can pull that off, but there are right. some limits that you need to be prepared to hear. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and, and there's some expectations to understand, you know, there's um, like Adam, he makes it look so easy. That can't be that easy. Cause if it was that easy, everyone would do it. 
<laughs> but I, I, I always say if you if there's something that you want to try or something you haven't, go to YouTube. Someone's done a video on it. Yeah. Guaranteed. That's true. I can't think of something that there isn't a video. That's where I found, you know, most of the stuff for, you know, how to how to change up uh, portable radio stations. You mm-hmm. know, how what are people using? What kind of antennas should I use? You know, yeah. that's 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 where I learned it. it. everything was everything was Discord and YouTube. Yeah. As crazy as that sounds. Yeah, YouTube has been a boon for the hobby, definitely. And uh once again, grateful that you're contributing to it. Uh, you're adding your voice to the the POTA side of things. You're also talking about some of the stuff that you've been using. I look forward to you integrating homebrewing and piloting as well to those things. Uh, get your your unique perspective on on some of that stuff. I used to homebrew as myself, so that would that would be very interesting to watch. I think. Um, one of my big YouTube mentors. He's also a home brewer. Um, his his channel is uh, short circuited brewing. So if you, if you thought about doing something in brewing, check out his channel. Uh, I'm going to tell Brian I gave him a shameless plug, but yeah, but uh, send me the link. I'll yeah. put it in the show notes. <clears throat> yeah, it's awesome. He's a he's a great guy, and he he's giving me thumbnail advice. And he didn't even have to do with brewing. He's giving me YouTube advice, and and uh, these like I said, these content creators they're the greatest people out there, and they're they love helping people. Yeah. I haven't found one yet that I've talked to that didn't like to help somebody. Leave me alone. I don't want to help. You. <laughs> That's we'll get a YouTuber. Let me talk about my ailments. <laughs> Eventually we'll get a YouTuber who's like that. And then, then Nah. Yeah. They won't they don't they don't gravitate towards the, <laughs> the banter that we have with our channels with our with our group of people that we hang out with. We're all pretty self uh, uh kind of like we're all kind of alike. Yeah. Different but alike. Well, it's a great group you have. Once again, it's that's the Ham Radio Clubhouse. And then check out Shane's wonderful channel, which is ever growing. It's this side of the radio. Lots of good editing in there. Lots of good operation. I absolutely love it. If you want to see me stumble around, watch my first video. <laughs> they always say the first one will get you. Well, yeah, it's, it's always the early the ones. That are cringeworthy. According to the creator, they're cringeworthy. But for us, we're like, that, that was fine. That was great. <laughs> yeah. I look back at that first video. I was like, man, there's so many things that I would I would change about how I how I filmed it, how I did it. I was like, I'm not deleting anything ever. Yeah, just leave it up there. Because I, I want to go back and, and see what I look like, you know, five years from now, if I'm still yeah. doing this. Hopefully, I'm still doing this. But five years from now, I want to look back and go, wow, what a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> Even this podcast, I'll listen to early episodes of this podcast, and it's it's less than a year old, and wow. I'll be like, oh, why why did I sound like that? <laughs> why did I ask? <laughs> why it did that why didn't I edit that out? <laughs> I could have I could have asked that so much better, you know. But the critic is always there. But hey, just keep. And producing. you're always your worst critic, yeah. your own worst critic. Just keep doing it, right? Exactly. Well, Shane, it's been awesome. Thanks for having this conversation with me. Thanks for sharing your side of things. It's really been cool. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks for having me. And I appreciate it. For my listeners, please check out his channel. Please check out the Clubhouse discussions as well. I'm pretty sure you'll have a laugh if you watch them. <laughs> It'll, it might even be a totally serious topic. They might be talking about you know batteries or something, and they'll find some way to make it a, a, a huge comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually after the first uh, 30 minutes. Yeah. That's when it really definitely. gets good. Tuesday <laughs> nights for the, uh, the ham radio clubhouse. And then Shane, 7, 7 PM central time. Yeah. 7 PM central. We even had a banter about that. I'm like, what's up with central time? It's the West time. West time is best time. Talk about Pacific <laughs> time. And they're like, Nope. Right. Central time is the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start giving out Zulu time. <laughs> what is that? That's a zero hour Zulu, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll say 7-3 for now. And thanks a lot again, Shane. 73. been listening to Hamden Thoughts by AD6DM. Thanks a lot, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>